rent charts. If you have not caught it one, please make sure you pick one up. And it's just a systematic way if you read those scriptures provided every single day, by the end of the year you would have read through the entire Bible. It's a great way to organize your Bible reading. If you know someone who needs you, please take one for them as well. 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse number 24. And it came to pass after this that Benadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. Everybody say besieged. Besieged. That word. <clears throat> By definition, and most probably in the context of the scripture, one of the definitions for the siege means to surround the city with soldiers in an effort to take control of it. It is a, um, a tactical strategy, and this is what was happening here. They were surrounding the city, the army, to basically start them and weaken them out. So he besieged the city, besieged Samaria, and there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, they besieged it, until an ass's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver. And the fourth part And the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. It was to illustrate the, the seriousness of the famine in the land. That they had resorted to selling things for consumption that under normal circumstances you wouldn't consume. So I'd like you to look at chapter 7 and start from verse number 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. What the prophet was saying was in complete contradiction, apparent contradiction, to what was happening in the city. He was saying tomorrow this time, yes. real stuff is going to be sold for less than the things that are being sold now. In other words, he said there was going to be a shift and a change tomorrow. Yeah. Then the Lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, so after the man of God made that statement, someone who was, someone that the king depended upon, answered the man of God and he told the prophet, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? It almost seems um, ridiculing in a way. Like I doubt it. And he said, Behold. So when he said, this might be if the Lord makes windows in heaven and stuff up out of heaven, and basically what he's saying, if there is a miracle. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. That words that was being said was not to someone who believed it. It was to someone who did not believe it. It was being said to someone who ridiculed and did not believe it possible. He said, Behold, 
Say what you want to say. Doubt if you want to doubt. The Lord spoke. His word is His word. You are to see it with your own eyes. But you shall not eat thereof. I'd like to uh, title this message this evening. Deliverance for the besieged. Tell your neighbor, deliverance for the besieged. Why don't you lay down your Bibles tonight and lift your voices to Him by the power and authority of the name of Jesus. We come before you tonight and we take into dominion everything that would attempt to steal the word from our lives. I pray the prayer of faith right now that you release the gift of faith in this house. To believe that nothing is impossible to them that believe. I pray tonight by the power and authority of the name of Jesus. That your word would fall upon good ground. That your word would be like that seed that would be productive. Not only would it grow roots, but it would be fruitful in our lives. Speak to us tonight, Lord. Give us a spirit of revelation in this house. We ask these things in Jesus' name and everyone say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight. When we read the scripture, the story that we are probably most familiar with, the city of Samaria had been besieged by the enemy of the children of God. It had been led by Benadad, the king of Syria. And Benadad had gathered his hosts and his army. And he went up against Samaria. The scripture is very clear that there was a great famine in the land. And for lack of better words, the situation was severe. And the situation was quite pathetic. All resources of food have been cut off. This was not given, this message was not um, inspired by the current cut in government funding and as we see on the news as people are needing to visit food banks of the sort, but it ties in pretty well as I'm standing here thinking about it. But all resources of food have been cut off to the city of Samaria. And for lack of better words, the reality was people were starving. And in order to encourage the people of the city who were enduring hardship, and in order to resist the Syrian enemy who was trying to suffocate them, Jehoram the king walked along the walls of the city. And as he walked along, walls of the city in an attempt to encourage the people in the city. As he made his rounds, he was approached by a woman who cried to him, the Bible says. She said, help me, my lord, O king. And at the king's request, she made known her desire to him. She said, I made a bargain with another woman that they should eat their sons on different days. One day we would eat your son and another day you would eat mine. And her plea to the king was, I have kept my part of the bargain. But now that we have fulfilled our hunger pains and ate it. But now the second mother does not want to give up her child. Without going into detail about that situation, to me it is evident that it was a tragic time and a tra tragic situation faced the citizens of Samaria. For the besieged city was in essence at the mercy of its enemy. And the people in the city were starved and they were trapped and they had no way out that they resorted to things that in their normal situations they would never have resorted to. There is a true story that 
happened in the 1970s. There was a group of Hungarian athletes who were traveling to Chile. And their plane had crashed in the heights of the Andes. And the story was actually written into a book, and it was a gruesome, horrific tale. But to make a long story short, the story details the account of this Hungarian athlete and their 72 days of survival in the high mountainous areas of the Andes. And the search party, when they looked for them with Archie, they could not find them. And as those who survived the ordeal gave detailed accounts of what happened on those 72 days, they began to share that the intense hunger, the intense hunger, the intense hunger of the survivors forced them to eat the flesh of those who had already died and who could not make the journey. There is a saying and the saying is pretty true. And the saying says that there is no oppression like that of hunger. They say at the time of the gold rush in California, the Dollar Party made up of culture, religious people from Illinois and other Midwest areas. When they were traveling, they were overtaken by the snows in the Sierras. And at a certain place, most of them died there. They said that it was recorded that the stronger ones began to wait for the weaker ones, Brother Roy, to die so that they could have their bodies to sustain them. They said there were tales of even how some were murdered. It is interesting to me how hunger will cause people to do crazy and unusual things. I've come to tell you this evening, there is a spiritual hunger in this world. I said there is a spiritual hunger in this world. And that spiritual hunger causes men and women to do crazy and unusual things. I was just sitting at a meeting on Friday at work, and one of the girls that was sitting at the same table, in conversation to those on the table, she said, this is what she said, she said, does anybody know where there's a good Zen temple to visit. So that caught my attention. And I said, oh, why are you wanting to visit a Zen temple? I, I asked curiously, right? She said, oh, well, I'm a Christian, but I'm just interested in all these other beliefs. I left it there, but I left thinking. I can understand why she made that statement. Because of a spiritual hunger. Men and women are dying for lack of proper nourishment. They have been besieged by the adversary and left starving for spiritual strength. So many people are lean and are sickly and are unable to cope with the current realities of the world. And you might just think they're in a bad situation, but if we could pull back the curtain of the realm of the spirit, we would be able to see that many are captive. As a matter of fact, it is said of Jesus, he would come to preach deliverance to the captives. Who are those that are captive? They are captive, they are besieged by the archie, by the enemy of our soul. Satan holds them captive. The world is bound by helpless religious traditions and creeds of men that cause people to still be spiritually hungry. You can come to church and still be hungry. You can be faithful in your tithing and still be hungry and empty. You can be raised knowing the Bible from cover to cover and still be spiritually Famished. Now, some of you who are of considerable age, um, considerable age means over 40.
we're considered that are of considerable age. We are familiar with um, a columnist who would write in the in the papers named Ann Lander. Do you remember her? See, all of the about 40 say, uh-huh. There was a letter in one of her columns one day that said this. Dear Ann Landers, I would like to comment on the letter from the person who criticized you for publishing and pushing God in your column. He said you were not respectful of the rights of atheists. She said, I am an agnostic who is frank to admit that I am deeply envious of the true believers who view God as a personal friend. She said, I have searched for such a relationship for many years and have never found it. I am now a middle-aged male, I guess he said. I am now a middle-aged male and very ill. From the time I was old enough to learn, I had hoped I would find God before I needed him. He said it didn't happen. He said, I sometimes wonder if this void in my life is the biblical hell. He said, the alienation and the loneliness I feel is indescribable. So dear Anne, please keep plugging God in your column. If you can help someone find him, you will have done a beautiful thing. I propose to you tonight that there are multiplied tens of thousands of men and women, not only in this world, but in this community, in circular circumstances, who are hungry, who are hungry for something that you and I have tangibly gotten a hold of. Oftentimes we can, if we're not careful, become comfortable in coming to the house of God and taking for granted what we have in Him. I seen somebody else um, post something the other day. They said, they said so, um, so many people. I forgot to say it now. Oh. So many people want to spend time in eternity, but they don't want to spend time with God. They're looking to spend eternal time in eternity, but they don't want to spend time with God. I propose to you tonight that our community is filled with thousands of men and women in similar circumstances. They are looking, they are searching, they are hungry. They don't want to hear about necessarily the Bible because they've heard about it, but they want to experience the reality of this man called Jesus Christ. They are void of the peace that passes all understanding. They are void of the peace of an almighty God that we have sung about tonight because they have been besieged by the adversary. The devil is smart. He will wait you out. He will circle you with all kinds of stuff and begin to just starve you out until you have nothing. And then you begin to resort to find satisfaction in areas that you would never have dreamed of finding satisfaction in. Then you begin to find nourishment and so-called appealment and so-called fulfillment in areas that in times gone past you would have never stepped into that circle because the enemy of our soul has besieged so many people that their lives are void of the peace of an almighty God. The church today needs to be more than just social programs because social programs will not do it. The church today needs to be more than humanitarian effort because humanitarian effort will not do it. I didn't say we shouldn't have social programs. I didn't say we shouldn't do humanitarian effort, but it has to be more than that for the top. What the church today needs to be is much more than that because social programs and humanitarian programs will never, it might feed the hungry for a day, it might put them on their feet for a year, but it will never bring liberty to a world who is in captivity.
captivity. It will never set deliverance to the captives. If we are to affect the world, the message must be preached. But it must not just be preached, but it must be preached as the Apostle Paul said. I come not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration and in the power of the Holy Ghost. Lectures is not going to do it. Oratory skills are not going to do it. Your knowledge of the Bible is not going to do it. Your degree from a university or a seminary is not going to do it. All of the charisma in the world will not equal to what can be found and accomplished in a real tangible experience of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Many have been deceived into believing that all there is in religion is a form of godliness. But you can have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. People have been deceived and deceived by the enemy. <clears throat> it is your business and it is my business to be about the Father's business. It is our business to let the world know that there is a transforming power in the gospel to change life. You've got to believe, you've got to bring yourself to the place to believe that this gospel can truly transform the life of those who you think there is. Some of us say, if we could ever do it to so and so, then we will know God is real. No, God is real, but the gospel has the ability to transform life. The death, the burial, and the resurrection has the ability to transform the life of any child, any parent, any friend, any relative, any neighbor. It doesn't matter how high, how low, but you got the Bible said, if that life that you have is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Greater is he that is in me. Greater he that is in you. There is an ability to transform the community through the gospel. A mighty revival of deliverance is not only needed, but it is on its way. The word promises us an outpouring and an ingathering of souls in Acts chapter 2. When Peter stood on the day of Pentecost and preached his message on the day of Pentecost, he quoted from the book of Joel, and many of you are familiar with that verse. He said, but this is that. This is that. This is that. Not this is one of them. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will, 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 I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. This was accomplished not by a humanitarian. Spirit of God. The same Spirit that came into this world in the beginning and separated light from darkness. This is what is needed. You and I, in the year 2019, must stand upon this truth and continue to proclaim in this hour. For this is the hour. We must stand upon the truth of the transformational power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news. The good news. Paul said that good news is that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. There is transformational power in his death, in his burial, and in his resurrection. When we look at the New Testament church, when they repented, they identified with his death. There must 
and they identified with his burial when they were baptized in the name above every other name. And they identified with his resurrection. That's what Paul said anyway, when they were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is the experience that Jesus spoke to Nicodemus about in John chapter 3. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again of water and of the Spirit. We must stand, 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 stand. It doesn't matter if the enemy seems like he's pressuring you and closing you in and it seems like you might be suffocated. I've come to tell you, we must stand with the Roy and continue to proclaim this truth in this hour as long as we have breath. We, we are seeing an increase of a spiritual momentum. There is a great harvest and in gathering that we have witnessed over the last so many years. There are those, actually this is quite encouraging to me to say the least. When we look at what the church is confronted with today, Sister Kathy, the church is confronted with an unprecedented element of unbelief. There is so much pressure on the church today, but there is also an increase in a spiritual momentum in the church of the living God today. We are in our greatest hour. We are in our greatest hour. But sometimes I think that our uh, the element of belief, that it's unbelief that we are confronted in with is more from within than without. There have been many who have preached that there would be a great falling away. Well, there is some truth to that. There has been a great falling away in many religious bodies. Many religious bodies today are being challenged because the churches are filled with, and excuse the terminology, but the churches are filled with the older people and younger people are not interested in going to church and, and there are churches that are closing down and, and, and denominations that are ceasing to exist because of what is happening internally in the churches. There is a great falling away because if you stray from the truth, you will eventually be received by the adversary. But I gotta tell you, on the flip side, there is still an unprecedented move of God in the earth. There is an unprecedented move of the Spirit of God in the earth. There might be deterioration in some places. There might be consolidation and people having to move together to hold things together. But there is a mighty awakening amongst us. There is a mighty awakening amongst those who are sincere, amongst those who are hungry. If you are hungry, be who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. We are experiencing a great outpouring around the world. I was going to just bring you the statistics, but I didn't pull them from the crusade that we just had over the last week. What happened in Thailand, what happened in the youth conference in Papua New Guinea, what happened. I mean, the things that are happening is unprecedented. The revival that is happening in Latin America, we are now at the place that we cannot hold our services in churches. We have to hold our conferences in stadiums. We cannot hold them in convention centers for the time because there is an unprecedented revival moving along. You see what's happening in India, what's happening in Pakistan, what's happening in many countries of the world. But if you are keen to what is happening, there is a revival that is breaking forth on the North American continent. If you are aware of some of the things that are happening, we are experiencing an unprecedented move of God. And this is only the beginning of what God wants to do through his church. I've come to tell you today, even though there's pressure from the 
outside world, pressure from politics and pressure from all kinds of stuff, there is still that cannot stop a hungry heart. That cannot stop someone who is hungry. I tell you the prayer that you should pray. Pray every day, Lord, let my feet be shut about with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Lead me, lead me to somebody who is hungry. Lead me to somebody who is not satisfied. Lead me to somebody who is thirsty. Lead me to somebody whose heart is sincere and they have been besieged by the enemy and everything is caving in on them, but they're crying out. They're crying out. The Bible says, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. When the prophet Elijah prophesied, he said, tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gates of Samaria. In the gates of Samaria. And the Lord on whom the king leaned upon did not believe him and he said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows of heaven in heaven, then maybe this thing would happen. I already alluded to that already, but I want to say it again. It was the voice of a, of a skeptic. It was the voice of an unbeliever. It was the voice of someone that says, I don't believe that God has done a miracle. I don't, if, if God is real, then why is all this happening? If this and that and all that. It was a voice of a skeptic. It was a voice of people who like to think they're realists. It was a voice of the archer of somebody who said, there's no way that's going to happen. Because they're looking from their eyes. But the prophet said, no, 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 tomorrow. It don't matter how it looks today, tomorrow. So many times our eyes are on what's happening today. But I got to tell you, you're the most blessed person if you heard a voice from the Lord, Sister Kathy, that say, no, it's everything going to pan itself out. He has been faithful time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. As a matter of fact, he said we would never be begging for bread. And it was the voice of a, of a doubter who did not believe the prophecy of God's word. What I preach about, what the Bible is about, matters not to those who doesn't believe. That does not stop God from fulfilling His Word. The Bible says His Word will go forth and accomplish that which it was purposed to do. When the man of God, when the unbeliever and the skeptic said that, the man of God responded to his unbelief. And he said, Behold, you shall see with your eyes what you shall never, shall not eat thereof. There is coming a day, Brother Tom, that people will see the promises of God fulfilled, but they will not be partaking of it. There is coming a day, Brother Archie, when people will see God do the miraculous, but it's not going to be on them, it's going to be on somebody else. Those who oppose the move of God in these last days, according to the scripture, they will witness the great and mighty acts of God. Those who say the days of miracles are over, while well, the days of miracles are not over. I could just walk right down the aisle and, and you could tell me the miracles that God has done in your life and somebody else's life you pray for and somebody else's life. We just heard the report, right, to Siloke, of how there was a tumor in the back of the head, and now the doctors cannot find nothing. There wasn't a month ago, that was last week. Now the doctors are searching and scratching and, and thinking that maybe they made a mistake, or maybe there was a report. I find it interesting, really, really interesting, Brother Carl, that a doctor would take an x-ray or a cat scan on a person's head and deem that the tumor is so bad that they would pay for them to fly to the continent to U.S. to address the situation. 
and now because they can't find it up there, you say, oh, somebody must have made a mistake. You don't make mistakes like that. The unbelievers can say what the unbelievers want to say, but God has been faithful time in and time out, over and over and over and over and over again. I do still believe the scripture to be true, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I still believe, Brother Tom, these signs shall follow them that believe they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They told you the same thing, right, Sister Angel, last year. Doctor said you had how many millimeter was the tumor? Ten millimeter tumor in her body. And she went for prayer and she came back and the doctors assumed they made a mistake because they couldn't find nothing. But after her to tell you the story, she ran around the doctor. This wasn't in 2001. This wasn't in 1875. This was in 2018. And she ran around the doctor's office as they were saying we made a mistake. She said, thank you, Jesus. Jesus just healed me. Jesus just healed me. Jesus just healed me. These signs shall follow them that believe. Doctors have no answer for it. But he says, they shall see it with their eyes, but they shall not eat thereof. They're going to see it. It's going to happen. But they're not going to partake in what is happening. There is an unprecedented move of God that is moving amongst us. We will witness and see great and mighty acts of God. We live in a world today that everybody likes to explain everything away. Well, say what you want. Believe what you want to believe. But I just believe that when he, his ears are inclined unto the prayers of the righteous. I just believe, ask and it shall be given, uh, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. I still believe, Sister Annette, that we can pray and call for the elders and anoint them with oil and pray the prayer of faith and the sick shall be healed. I don't know about you, but I, I, I still believe I still believe when, when on our prayer line, when prayers come across on our prayer line to everybody in the church, and we go into prayer, and in a matter of time, the report comes back. Thank you, church, for praying, because God did the miraculous. I don't know about you, but I want to tell you, God is still doing things in our midst. The enemy might seem to have besieged you by certain situations, but you've got to stand. You've got to stand. When all is said and done, you've got to stand. Make sure your feet is planted. The greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We've got to build a house upon what? Upon the rock. Right, Brother Archie? Some people, when they read the Bible, they refer to the miracles of Christ as parables. They call them symbolic. They say they are just stories to represent stuff. Well, that's probably because they've never experienced any miracles of Christ. But you can't tell me because you're too late now. I said you cannot tell me because you're too late now. You cannot tell me because you're too late now. You cannot tell me that all the doctor's education, the highest technology of machines, that they're going to see what they're going to see. But when the church, as soon as Zion travails, I'm telling you, there is a spiritual awakening and a spiritual hunger. There are people who are hungry because they're at their wit's end, Brother Archie, and they realize they've tried everything, and when you lay in your bed at night, and you realize that there has to be more, 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 even those who love him, there has to, has to, has to, has to be more. 
Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. One of the greatest assets that you have is being hungry for God. Hungry for God. It is tragic to see that our world today is deceived by unbelief. It's tragic to see that our world today is being choked by unbelief. But at the same time, Sister Kathy, there is an inner man that is crying out for such intense hunger. Such intense hunger and they're hungry. The church has the answer. You have the power. You have the word. You have the message. You have the spirit. Be not weary. It will do. Bring and you can just stay right there. As I close tonight, I actually wanted to close on this fashion. January 20th, 2019. Seek first the kingdom. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on the prize. I said keep your eyes on the prize. Without me going into too much detail. I, I can stand before you and tell you with full confidence. Not I think, but I know. God has told me the other day. And I won't go into detail how it all unraveled, but I'm at a point in my life after having lived for God for almost 30 years. That if after 30 years I don't know what God's voice sounds like, then I will try. God said, keep praying. Pray. Keep praying because people are going to start responding. Keep praying. Don't stop praying, in church. It's not a coincidence that we have put multiple things on our prayer list. I know many of you have been praying every single day for the things that have been coming across to the prayer list. I know we added the prayer for our children. Keep praying. Even when it don't look like it's happening, keep praying. There is a stirring, there is a movement, there is a mixing that has happened. But many are called, but few are chosen. It has to do with hunger. You gotta be hungry. You can sit in the service and still not get nothing if you're not hungry. You've got to be hungry. What the preacher said the other week, there's got to be more, more, more. I want more, I want more. I know there is more. There is more. There is more. A world is besieged by the enemy. Those that you work with are crying. They're crying. They're crying. And sometimes we're afraid to approach them. I tell you what, if you would be careful, God will tell you who to approach and what to approach. If you would just be careful. I want you to stand tonight and let's Lift the arms to you. I'm hungry, Lord. I still believe in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The things that we look at in the news, the things that we see happening in our own community, people are hungry. People are hungry. People want meaning with Archie. People want meaning. And 
It's not in all those things, only Jesus. Oh, Pastor, you really believe that I believe it? Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Only Jesus can give you the peace that passes all understanding. A job can I give you that peace. A spouse can I give you that peace. A child can I give you that peace. Here I am. Just lift your hands to him tonight. He loves you so much.
inside of love, Trisha. Awaken the mighty spiritual giant inside of Trisha. Awaken that mighty spiritual giant inside of Roy. Call it by name. Call it by name. Call it by name. Awaken that mighty spiritual giant inside of Shacy.
praying for your children. Keep praying for your children. God is doing something. I said, God is at work. I said, God is at work. Sometimes the one that you least expect, God is at work. Pray for your children to have a humble and available and willing heart. God is at work. Some of you should open an app on your phone. Start writing down the things that you know God is doing. Because you're going to forget them. Start writing them down and watch that list begin to grow. Amen. Start writing them down. Before we dismiss you tonight,